what what people miss now i still understand why it's so hard bitcoin is the best savings technology that's ever been invented full stop it's money that doesn't devalue it actually is deflationary instead of inflationary over the past few weeks coinciding with decelerating outflows from grayscale's gbtc and in outflows as likely due to investor concerns regarding stagflation a scenario characterized by slower economic growth and persistent inflation which reduces the likelihood of federal reserve rate cuts according to the cme fedwatch tool traders are currently placing low odds of a june rate cut at just 11.3 percent with higher probabilities for cuts in September 44.8% and November 43.8%. This suggests that market analysts are anticipating the Federal Reserve to maintain steady rates in May and June, with the possibility of cuts later in the year. It's the best save. Now, now, when do you spend your savings? Not never. Not never. You spend it when you have a big expense, right? You want to buy a house. You want to send your kids to college. You want to take a vacation. So this, you know, this whale that bought it at, I think it was like 70 cents or something, no, 50 cents, and he held it all the way to 70,000 and sold 1,000. It was like, oh my God, you know, it doesn't have diamond hands. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. At some point, you need to replenish. The, the way you have to think about it is three buckets, right? We all have a liquidity bucket. 10 to 15% of our wealth that we need to spend for our lifestyle. Then we have a get rich bucket, right? 10 to 15%. And that's for all the crazy ideas, you know, the brother in law's condo deal, the, the hot <laughs> stock tip you got from your friend. You're going to lose all that. So just keep it small, but that's fine. <laughs> and then you have your savings bucket, and that's 70 to 80% of your wealth. And, and the boomer approach is 60, 40, 70, 30, diversified portfolio, stocks and bonds. Well, now this incredible asset digital assets has come along and now you can diversify into those things and you could even say well with bitcoin i could just i could swap that whole portfolio into bitcoin fine you want to do that that's fine that that could be your savings but here's the thing that 10 to 15 percent in your liquidity bucket there's a hole in the bottom it's going to drain so you got to keep replenishing it really and as the bitcoin keeps to appreciating can remember bitcoin doesn't grow it's the currency that's getting worse mm -hmm. or the demand is rising, right? Supply and demand. And I don't see why that's so hard. And I don't see why people look at it as a negative if you take some of your savings and spend it. Yeah. That's how life I've been tweeting about this this week. So I have recently invested in one such corporation, uh, a Japanese corporation called MetaPlanet. And uh, myself and Jason Fang and, and a number of others. So uh, Simon Garovich has, has run this company for a number of years. And he realized that, you know, the, the issue is worse in Japan than it is in the U.S. Because mm -hmm. the Japanese yen has been on a one-way downward path <laughs> since 2011. It went from 85 yen per dollar to 152.7 this morning. I mean, it's just brutal and he finally said you know what we're we're going to take a, a page out of the the sailor playbook and or micro strategy playbook and you know when when a play works you should run it and to your point lots of corporations in the united states who are sitting on these mountains of cash you know buffett for example but buffett's never going to do it right because he calls it it rat poison squared i'm like what does that even mean and how do you even know what rat poison tastes like unless you're a rat? No, I'm just kidding around. Mm. Um, so, yes, other companies are, are going to do it. It'll be smaller, I think, at first. And there's probably some that have done it, but they don't really want to talk about it because if it doesn't work. And, and you can't have a short time horizon for this. You have to have a long time horizon. And you have to have the ability uh, in the company to... Uh, access capital markets to grow. And and I think uh, that means you have to have good reach and good relationships. So uh, good management. So I think, you know, not every company should should probably jump right in if you don't have people who are well-versed in, in the segment. 
It's the best saving. Now, now, when do you spend your savings? Not never. Not never. You spend it when you have a big expense, right? You want to buy a house. You want to send your kids to college. You want to take a vacation. So this, you know, this whale that bought it at, I think it was like 70 cents or something. No, 50 cents. And he held it all the way to 70,000 and sold 1,000. It was like, oh my God, you know, it doesn't have diamond hands. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. At some point, you need to replenish. The, the way you have to think about it is three buckets, right? We all have a liquidity bucket. 10 to 15% of our wealth that we need to spend for our lifestyle. Then we have a get rich bucket, right? 10 to 15%. And that's for all the crazy ideas, you know, the brother-in-law's condo deal, the, the hot <laughs> stock tip you got from your friend. You're going to lose all that. So just keep it small, but that's fine. <laughs> and then you have your savings bucket and that's 70 to 80% of your wealth. And, and the boomer approach is 60, 40, 70, 30, diversified portfolio, stocks and bonds. Well, now this incredible asset, digital assets has come along and now you can diversify into those things. And you could even say, well, with Bitcoin, I could just, I could swap that whole portfolio into Bitcoin. Fine. You want to do that? That's fine. That, that could be your savings. But here's the thing. That 10 to 15% in your liquidity bucket, there's a hole in the bottom. It's going to drain. So you got to keep replenishing. Yeah. And as the Bitcoin keeps to appreciating, can remember, Bitcoin doesn't grow. It's the currency that's getting worse mm -hmm. or the demand is rising, right? Supply and demand. And I don't see why that's so hard. And I don't see why people look at it as a negative if you take some of your savings and spend it. Yeah. Tell life about this this week. So I have recently invested in one such corporation, uh, a Japanese corporation called Meta Planet. And uh, myself and Jason Fang and, and a number of others. So uh, Simon Garovich has, has run this company for a number of years. And he realized that, you know, the, the issue is worse in Japan than it is in the U.S. Because mm -hmm. the Japanese yen has been on a one-way downward path since 2011. It went from 85 yen per dollar to 152.7 this morning. I mean, it's just brutal. And he finally said, you know what? We're, we're going to take a, a page out of the, the sailor playbook and or microstrategy playbook. And you know, when, when a play works, you should run it. And to your point, lots of corporations in the United States who are sitting on these mountains of cash, you know, Buffett, for example, but Buffett's never going to do it, right? Because he calls it, it rat poison squared. I'm like, what does that even mean? And how do you even know what rat poison tastes like unless you're a rat? No, I'm just kidding around. Mm. Um, so, yes, other companies are, are going to do it. It'll be smaller, I think, at first. And there's probably some that have done it, but they don't really want to talk about it because if it doesn't work. And, and you can't have a short time horizon for this. You have to have a long time horizon. And you have to have the ability uh, in the company to... Uh, access capital markets to grow. And and I think uh, that means you have to have good reach and good relationships. So uh, good management. So I think, you know, not every company should should probably jump right in if you don't have people who are well-versed in, in the segment. 